All right, now Gibson's QC issues is something that has always been documented, always talked about, and I was kind of curious after getting a new one, are they really that bad? So a lot of you guys know already, but I recently got this SG that was made at the end of 2020 and then available to purchase at the very beginning of 2021. So I just got this. I'm the guitar's first owner. And uh, there was a lot of love for Gibson in the comment section. There was also a lot of hate from people who were just saying that they had Gibsons with a lot of QC issues. Now, one of the things I was really noticing that a lot of people would list dates, 2016 Les Paul, SG, Firebird, whatever it was, 2017, 2013, 2014. Well, that was all pre-JC era. So JC is the current CEO who came in and wanted to basically, you know, reinvent, change a lot of stuff about Gibson, the way that they were manufacturing. And a lot of people have really praised Gibson over the different stuff that they've done. So I thought, well, I want to do a deep dive on this SG and see if it still maintains a lot of the QC issues that they had in the past or have they fixed a lot of the stuff and it, are they really on the right track where a lot of people like myself who love Gibson would love to see that stuff happen. All right, so the fingerboard was the first area where I started noticing things were a little bit funky at times. And uh, this is not a video that's meant to be, I'm not just gonna bash Gibson the whole time. I'm gonna tell you guys some things that I really like that I think Gibson just did such a fantastic job on with the guitar, but also some areas that were a little bit questionable. And maybe you guys will have more insight why these things are the way that they are. But like I said, the fingerboard, I thought the figuring on the fingerboard looked really nice. The inlays were all done very good, no issues there at all. But what I did notice, is the tooling marks are these like real straight lines and almost little dents at times in the fingerboard so we tried to do our best to get some some b-roll with the macro lens and, and show you guys but i did notice that just you know playing and looking at the fingerboard i'm like what are these lines so i even uh text my buddy uh trogley over there and asked him what they were and he said they're basically just tooling marks that you could maybe get out with uh you know proper sanding techniques so i'm not going to mess around with that stuff and the other thing is that I did not condition the fretboard. This is just the way that it came. Uh, as soon as this video is done, I'm gonna change strings, condition the fingerboard, all that kind of stuff. Now, I don't know exactly what causes this on the fingerboard. I looked at a bunch of my other guitars that had a rosewood fingerboard on them, and I didn't see any marks. I looked at the Freedman, I looked at the Jazzmaster, I looked at uh, the Martin, a bunch of different stuff. None of them had these Thule marks. So I don't know if it is possibly a way that the binding is put on the guitar, because I don't have any other guitars that have the style of binding that Gibson has. Uh, most of mine have either like a natural scraped binding to them or, you know, Austin said maybe it's the way they crown the frets or something, but I don't know what causes it, but I don't know if that is something to kind of like raise concerns for you guys because, again, Austin said you could maybe get rid of it with some sanding technique, so I don't know. It's up to you if that one bothers you. Now, the body, the neck joint, and of course the back of the neck because it's, well, it's a set neck, but that stuff was perfect. You know, I loved the, the finish, seeing the grain in there. There were no funky spots in the and the lacquer, the back of the neck is really, really good. The neck joint looked great, so no issues at all there. Um, one thing, you know, I think people don't talk about enough is the smell. It smelled great when I opened the case. It still kind of has that smell when I take it out of the case. So um, as far as that stuff goes, nothing. No issues at all with the body, the finish. Uh, that was all spot on. So the binding was the next area that had a couple of rough spots on it. You know, it wasn't as perfect as some of the other areas. And uh, again, I don't have any other guitars with this style of binding, like I said before. But, you know, I still feel like some of these are issues. If you like a guitar to be absolutely perfect, maybe this is something that would, again, deter you from, from wanting one of these. But to me, it doesn't matter because it doesn't, doesn't affect the way the guitar sounds and plays. But I still want to point them out. So you can see there's a couple of areas where it's a little bit discolored or even kind of like dented out. Um, you know, I don't know what all goes into putting binding on a guitar like this. Uh, there are a lot of like things I love about Gibson binding, which is of course they still are putting it over the ends of the frets. I love that. That is part of the part of the look and part of just the feel of, of a Gibson is I feel like that binding over the fret nibs. So I hope they never stop doing that. That is a total total like selling point for me. I'm like, oh, I love the way that a Gibson neck feels because of that exact reason. 
but yeah, I mean, like I said, nothing that affects the actual playability, but there are a couple of like little aesthetic issues. So one of the biggest areas of concern that I had seen with Gibsons in the past was the nut. I'd seen pictures, you know, this is probably the biggest QC area that I had seen was a lot of glue left over on the nut, um, maybe not slotted correctly, a lot of binding to where if you hear like your strings ping whenever you're tuning, that's a huge issue because uh, it's not going to hold tuning very well, you know, and, and that's, that's a big problem that a lot of people have with lots of guitars, not just Gibsons. But I'm super happy to say that there's no glue. They did such a good job on this one. Um, kudos to them because like I said that that's a very crucial part of any guitar and that's the one that I had seen the most pictures of in the past of having lots of issues with Gibsons and it's perfect you know there's there's nothing really to complain about at least to my eyes maybe a, a luthier or someone like that might have more insight but I thought that they did a great job it's very clean it stays in tune really really well so if that was an area that you would be concerned about at least with this one it, it's pretty dang good The final thing that I wanted to cover was the actual sound and the setup. Now, we got this guitar from Sweetwater, so they of course have their own 55 point inspection. Gibson includes a little like fold out where you can see all the QC things that they did themselves. And I think that overall, you know, good job. Uh, there are a few things, if you're the person, like I said before, who wants an absolutely perfect, flawless guitar, these things might be deal breakers to you. To me, I, I don't really like focus too much on that kind of stuff. Maybe I, maybe I should focus on it more. But um, as long as the guitar plays great and sounds great, that's always the number one priority for me. So none of the knobs are cracking, the switch still works, the pickups sound great, and the setup was really, really good. You know, I actually, I hadn't adjusted anything on it. It's exactly how it was when I got it out of the box. So whether it was Gibson setting it up or Sweetwater setting up, whoever set this guitar up did a really good job on it. And um, I think that, you know, I wouldn't let these things deter me from getting it if it was a guitar that was gonna inspire me to play, but I'll leave that up to you guys. And that is gonna be it. So let me know down below, do you think that these are things that, are they deal breakers for you? You know, to be honest, I wouldn't even have noticed a lot of this stuff if I wasn't purposely looking for it. So just like I said earlier in the video, it doesn't affect the playability. It doesn't affect the sound of it. The guitar is just as inspiring for me to play it. So to me, I think Gibson's doing you know a good job. These are some things maybe these could be improved on. So again, it's gonna be an individual situation. And obviously I can't buy like, 100 SGs to see how many of them have these issues or don't. But other than that, let me know what you think. If you would, hit the subscribe button, like the video, comment, all those good things that help the channel out. And uh, I will just be seeing you all next time. All right, bye guys. Woo, SG out.